I mean, right, you so. know, I, I think that um, that basically uh, it, it's an it's an aluminum ramp, and it, it, you know, if if we render it and show it to you, and is it, it we're we're not going to have any easy way to change that ramp by you know the things that we're rendering on it. I think that uh, it's, um, you know, we can, we can certainly do it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but if, you know, I mean, it's, I'm not sure where, it, where, it, where it goes really in, in down that path. Sure. Well, I think we do want to, you know, see what the landscaping is going to look like. I mean, I think there's a couple of things we want to say before we move forward. I'd like to understand okay. what you could do with the landscaping. And while you're at it, could you show us what the ramps are? It'll be easier for us to just give the green light okay. you know, I mean, to hold you up. But we're sort of tasked with the responsibility. Um, I understand the urgency, but. Um, oh, no, it's 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 not that. I, I think it's, I, I didn't, I thought that those, Elements were covered in the ARB. I'm just a little surprised. That's all. Um, uh, they they were okay with all this, Margaret. They didn't have any recommendations. Well, they 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 actually referred it, um, and the application to the planning board with their recommendation that the applicant considered using black aluminum, and um, and consider installing uh, landscaping to screen the ramp. So the ARB is an advisory board to the planning board. The planning board is the one that ultimately approves the architectural detail. Yeah, I didn't even but know. So they, they shared some of the same concerns with regard to the material and the landscaping. But what would the, I mean, that's an interesting point, Mr. Lewis. Does black aluminum look, what do you think? It seems well, it's we not of it. Well, we can get it from the manufacturer, for starters. Um, and we didn't. We weren't sure about that at the ARB meeting, uh, but we looked into it. And they, in order to to make it black, we'd have to take the whole ramp and send it to some third party oh, to get to anodize it. Very difficult. Mm. And frankly, I, I think it'll be more. It, it, I think it would be odd to have a black aluminum ramp twenty feet away from a clear anodized. Oh. Really yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Seeing so, the yeah. existing railings there as well. What's right. the wearing surface of the ramp? Is it also the same aluminum? It's all aluminum. So when you're looking at it from the street, you're going to see that also, right? That's right. Not it, it, it's aluminum. It's not. Um, it's 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 a com completely an aluminum ramp. Yeah, it is. Everything's aluminum. Okay. And then, nice. so, so if we're, you know, but then, so if there are problems with the aluminum, we begin to consider alternative ramps, masonry or wood, which would require much larger footings with, in the, if they're, if it's proximitous to the building, we begin to, we lose our trees with the larger, with oh. any kind of continuous footings. I, I don't know if I speak for the whole board, but I don't think we're going to. I don't think we're going to put, send you down that path. No. I mean, guys, please join in here. But I'm not yeah, no, we I, just approved this. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I think the choice of the aluminum, the, you know, the choice yeah. of using the aluminum ties in obviously with the with the railing you have yeah, on I, the side. So you know, the one on the front, the steps that go into the main, um, <clears throat> or or I guess uh, those few steps up. Those that's a black iron railing, but you can't you know, build a ramp out of black iron. So aluminum is probably the most cost effective way of, of approaching this. Um, but, you know, again, I just, I just think looking into the landscaping a bit could benefit mm -hmm. you, know, okay. you guys and also the, the neighborhood. Yeah, I, I agree that the landscaping is, a, is a, there's great potential there. Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit. So this has to be a public hearing. So could you just hold on a second? Um, Mr. Lewis and Pastor, and let's see if there's any uh, comments from the public. No, somebody yeah. else um, There is uh, someone here. Yeah. Okay. Can uh, unmute yourself and just state your name and address and um, your mm -hmm. comment. Hi, it's David DePaso, 152 Anderson Avenue. And I'm a congregant and I sent the letter. Yep. And I, I definitely think that it's because uh, I watched the other meeting and when they said 
a black railing, I yelled at the television saying, no, black wouldn't look right there. Because in a lot of the pictures, it doesn't show the uh, Grand Boulevard entrance. So okay. when you look at the church, you really need to take that into context. And that's from 1964. It's mid-century. It's all aluminum, which is what you guys were saying. Um, it will actually match better than the black. Okay, point taken. I think we're almost convinced, but I think we still want to see it a little bit. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, otherwise, you think it looks good? Yes. <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's two different styles of churches yeah. stuck together, so you're better off matching the mid-century, I think, than the other. No, I didn't realize yeah. that. This is exactly the uh, exactly what Mr. DePasso uh, wrote about in his uh, email dated uh, March 5th, 2020. Okay. I get that this is right after watching the ARB. Sure, yeah. It's here. Oh. Uh, oh, right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Thank night. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your stamina, by the way. <laughs> it's 1102. <laughs> oh, and we're almost, <laughs> almost done with four we're of the eight. Halfway uh, done. Yeah. We're going to pick up speed. Is there anyone else there, Rob? Uh, no, I don't see, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are no other Do. hands uh, at this point. So we're asking Mr. Lewis to put a few things together and come back to the next meeting. Just, or do you, or you want to just? I'm okay with. Uh, or you want to do an additional, yeah, please? Yeah. yeah, please. And just <laughs> make those two conditions that yes. we. Yeah. You guys are good. Well, what, yes. are the, what are the conditions? Uh, we want to see the landscaping has to be reviewed. They have to provide something has to be reviewed and has to be installed, just like we make on every other one, every other well, application. Well, yeah, yeah right. I, I, I think problem. you need to be a little more clear about that because usually that condition is when you have construction of a new single family home or new commercial development, they submit a landscape plan, it's reviewed and approved, and then we right. say you have to install it according with the approved plans. So I think you could either ask them to, um, you know, come back yeah, with a it. modest landscape plan or make it a condition of approval that they have a landscape plan. I, I just, I would uh, yeah. be a little more specific about the extent of that. Personally, I think they could do something very simple and put in a couple of little flowering trees or shrubs that, because you don't want it to get too crowded, um, you know, or you could just, yeah, okay. I don't know. If you really want to see a landscape plan, then I guess you could ask them to come back with that. I know in correspondence and in the ARB, they did say that's that's something they would be interested in and willing to do down the road, but not necessarily as a condition of approval. I know Mr. DePasso had mentioned that in his email as well, that that's something that he thought congregates would be interested in doing, but maybe not as a condition of approval. Sure. So then we're going to, um, so how, without coming up with a landscape plan that we review and approve, you're saying you can make it a condition that something is put there and who reviews and approves it. I guess it's just. No, I, I think you for... either make it a condition that they right. have to prepare a landscape plan. Um, honestly, I would have it come back to you um, or I would just approve it as it is and take their word for it that down the road, they're going to want to plant a couple of things. Okay. Two. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm sort of hearing. That's the way you put it, Mark. It's so good. And the aluminum is aluminum. Okay, we're done. All right. Uh, yeah. So then. I, I think the good of, of, of putting this ramp up uh, outweighs and, and, and recognizing that um, these are additional costs and delays. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think it makes that much of a difference if we have a good faith representation uh, from uh, the, the, the or the, a pastor. Uh, the, the, yeah, the pastor and <laughs> and, and, and the uh, the architect as well, that they'll, they'll at least look into this idea and, and give it uh, due consideration. I think it's fine without it. I think it may, may look better if it's done right with it. I think we, we're all in agreement with that. But, but, I, I, but I, I think I, 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 my, my strong preference is to just move forward with an approval here. I, I think it's, it's been carefully think considered. That Mr. Lewis had kind of indicated, you know, once we have it up, then we can see it. Yeah. I'm honestly afraid that if somebody does a landscape plan that they're going to kind of overdo it and bring more attention to yeah. it. I, I almost think it, get it up, see what it looks like and see whether it's really necessary or not. And, mm -hmm. Okay. 
So that being said, I think we move forward. We have to close the public hearing then, right? Yes. Yes. So then I make a motion to close the public hearing on application 2005, Grace Lutheran Church, 59 Grand Boulevard. Second. Oh, All in favor? Second. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Um, and then, so I, there's going to be no conditions. We're just going to right. approve it as is, and um, we anticipate the church will yep. do what they feel is best suited for it after it's up. Okay, so then I'll make a motion to approve the application <clears throat> 2005 Grace Lutheran Church. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, wait, second first, and then <laughs> aye. Yeah, we, we heard you. You said second. <laughs> okay, I, was, I, I jumped the gun. <laughs> what could I say? I'm a little anxious. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very Pass much. That's time. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank very you for much. all you do okay, for the community, too. I, so yeah. I know it's appreciated by everyone. You too, staying up so late. <laughs> yeah, okay. You can stay with us. Okay. <laughs> Keep inspiring us. All right, next application. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Can I step next away for two seconds? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah me too. I'm stepping away. Yeah, yeah, I'm stepping away too. I'll be right back. Should we just? Do or, you know, yeah. Let me get the application ready. You could, uh, you could gear up. He's so all next, set. what's that? He's all set, but you go ahead. Oh, he is. Oh, Mr. Barb Beauty. Okay. So, do you want to take a two-minute break? Yeah, two-minute break. I'll be right back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cookies. <laughs>
Thanks, guys. We're waiting for Mark, I guess. He just stepped away, probably to grab okay. something. Need an espresso. Mm. <laughs> I need a Sorry. cookie or something. <laughs> okay. Good thing we're all working from home tomorrow. I'm not. <laughs> I have to get up at five o'clock. I'm not either. Me too. Really? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's. I'm sorry, but yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Are we all here? Yes. Okay, good to go. Oh, and Dave. Mister, this is fifty-one Joyce Rep. You're up. Uh, hold on, because he's. Oh yeah. Okay, you're up, Dave. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Margaret, uh, David Barbu, the architect, representing uh, Mr. Stryker. Um, we received uh, planning board approval, I guess, probably late 2016, uh, early 2017. Um, we are here tonight for uh, an amendment to the approved site plan and uh, architectural uh, I guess review board approval on a one family house. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I can pull my drawings up and I can try to make this as painless as possible to go through what some of the changes were. Would you, would you please? Okay. Uh, great. Nope, wrong one. Did that come up? No. Oh, no. no. great. Okay. Okay. I have it now, right? Yes, we see it. Okay. Um, so basically, what had happened. Uh, the owner had done the what, what, what we see is, is we your, your, right, uh, your PDF, right? Yeah, but not the not the actual PDF. You might it want to open it. Opened, yeah. yeah. Can you see the site plan? No. no. Oh God. Go back to your share screen and then see if you can <sighs> find the PDF. Oh, there we go. Okay. Nope. Now, you know, see it again. There we got it. Yep. There it is. Yep. We got it. I've been doing this almost every night and every night mm -hmm. Google somewhere. <laughs> oh, you got it. It's fine. Okay. So, uh, basically what happened was the owner uh, had made some field changes and added some pavement to the prop to, uh, to the project. Uh, the building size did not increase uh, with the exception of he made the front portico a little long, a little uh, wider off the building, uh, which necessitated a zoning variance, which we received. Uh, we went to the zoning board for, I believe, three or four additional. One was impervious surface. Um, and I believe it was, there was also a, uh, a driveway with variance that was uh, uh, variance that was received. Um, so basically what we did, um, uh, and then there was also some facade treatments that I'll get into, get into in a few minutes. So we prepared a plan that basically had a hatched area, uh, which was the original approved, um, the stipple effect or cross hatch that I had here was areas to be legalized. So he created the sidewalk, widened the driveway, as I had mentioned, uh, did a concrete, uh, had for some air conditioning and 
and enlarged a patio that we originally had on the plan, but he made it bigger. Uh, and then he also installed a hot tub in the backyard. Um, there was also a small pad in the back that he had a swing set, which we have removed or is slated to be removed under the zoning. And there was a wider area of pavement at the driveway um, that we are scheduled to remove as part of the approval as well. Um, that's pretty much on the site plan. Oh, he also uh, installed a row of arborvitaes along uh, Dorchester Road and a small row of hedges uh, along Joyce. Yeah, let me go to the elevations. Uh, on the elevations, so basically what happened was um, we took the liberty of not finishing the front sides of the house for the approved uh, elevations that were approved back in 1617. Um, what we had done as a redesign in front of the architecture review board was we came back with the shakes at the top gable ends. Uh, he had eliminated the standing seam copper roof at the front um, above the garage. Uh, he did not put the pergola and he did not do the stone water table at the bottom. Uh, we went back, we redesigned, uh, put the stone water table back, did the pergola, trimmed out all the windows, uh, went back with the shakes. Um, he requested from me that we keep the, the architectural shingles because the standing seam copper would have been too expensive. Um, one of the other big points was he had installed a larger picture window at the front entrance with staircases. Um, and in order to mitigate a large picture window that really didn't match with the house, we're going to install a few vertical uh, mullions to create the effect of a casement window, um, all installing uh, the, the uh, mullions as well. Um, and I believe that's pretty much it. As I said, you know, we're going back with the uh, shakes on the gable end like, like we originally had and uh, doing some, you know, picture frame windows and some uh, uh, pediments above the windows like we originally had. David, do you have the actual as-built drawings or, or the existing conditions drawings? Uh, existing condition. Elevation, so they can see what the house looks like now. Okay, I probably have some photographs, so if you just bear with me of what it looks like now. Just figure out where I gotta go. Just bear with me on this. Okay, so, so that's, okay. The front, that's the front of the house as it is presently constructed. So the large picture window, um, there's the plantings in the front, uh, no pergola, uh, no water tables, things like that. Um, I can go around the house as well. That's just trying to get the side of the, the building. Um, so Dorchester side is very plain. You know, the window treatments. I don't even believe there were any uh, mullions in the windows. Right. On none of the windows, right? I don't see them anywhere. Okay. That's, yeah, right. And that's the rear of the house. So I basically did a quick picture frame, no pediments above the windows. Right. Um, you know, there's the hot tub, the expanded patio in the rear yard, um, the sidewalk along the uh, Dorchester side. And that's just the backyard gives you a little bit of a better picture of what he did. That's the is, it, is there some explanation as to why this was built so differently from what was approved? Um, 
I honestly, I couldn't tell you. Mm-hmm. Couldn't tell you. I'm, yeah, I, just, I'm just the architect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the front elevation, that window. I don't remember seeing that window, that big picture window. So, so, that, so that's the look stay here david so okay so that that's what it looks like now and then i right. think all you're being asked mm-hmm. to do is see what they're proposing and if that right. is what they're proposing yep. is acceptable and I, I i wanted you to see this because i do think they've added a lot of additional details now that it looks completely different um so this is what it looks like and then david maybe go back to yeah, your go back to the elevation. The front elevation i see so this house was basically just constructed yeah, so it, the drawing. It, it received, like David said, it, it received approvals in 2016. And when it right. received, received approvals in 2016, it looked very similar to what you're looking at now. Right. And then unfortunately, I think the homeowner is also the builder and he, he just kind of it's built what he felt comfortable with for, you know, for whatever reasons. And then as part of the inspection process, our building in- inspectors noted that uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the exterior treatments didn't uh, comport with the planning board approvals. So, um, and there was additional impervious surfaces. So then they were he was issued a violation. He had to stop work and he had to come back to um, get amended approval. So initially, when he came before the ARB, he essentially was asking them to just approve it as constructed to an extent with minor details. The ARB said no. They wanted him to go much further back toward what appeared to be the original mm-hmm. approvals. And so I think what you're looking at now um, not only looks much more similar to the original approval, even if it didn't, it's a big improvement over what's there now. But, yeah. and I think okay. it is that the homeowners are building as well, so. Yeah, I, I, I do well, recall- Just to advise the, um, the board as well, uh, in addition to the violation, the, the case is still pending in court it's been kind of tracking this approval process. Uh, the building department violations are still outstanding for non-compliance and number of other issues. Well, and part of the reason they're, they're outstanding because we haven't been able to wrap it up because he hasn't been able to get back before the boards for, for his approval. Yeah. Yeah. But so th- this is what's holding him up from getting, I think, a final CO at this point. Too. Yeah, I, I do. I remember this application a few years ago and I remember the the, the homeowner um, making something of a plea to us that, that you know, he, he needed a, uh, this is a pretty large house, I, re- I recall, for that, for that property. And uh, I, I seem to recall he had a large family, he has a large family, and that was part of the reason. So we kind of, you know, probably gave him the benefit of the doubt in, in approving this project. And, and so it's, it's, you know, when, whenever we approve something and it's built differently, um, that that that's something that it, it, I take in a, a particular affront to because that's what we're here for. Um, and, and if you're building it differently, uh, it's like a slap in the face. Um, this this one also with the impervious surface. I, I, I recall this is this traditionally, and I don't live far from this uh, this house. I live in the Huntley area. Um, there there's traditionally been water problems, literally right in front of this house, um, and and to have uh, additional impervious surface on the property um, is that much more of a, a, a wrong um, given given the, the the history that this this neighborhood and I believe you know all of it channeled right into there there were multiple sewers if I'm not mistaken right in front of this house where there have been um, so uh, I, I said my I've got my two cents in um, let's see what we can do going forward yeah. So I think, could you just go back to the front elevation one more time? Because I think it's been, it's much nicer. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when it's done, it's gonna look a yeah, hundred no. times better. This seems like a, yeah, this is not something similar to what we approved. All right, so yeah. I like I like your stuff, Dave, and I'm okay with that, so. Yeah, I think I the Moncton patterns, patterns yeah. the Moncton configuration in the window certainly brings the scale of the house down a little bit, um, adds a little bit of texture, and charm um yeah. yeah i mean you know I, I think i'm fine with it yeah me too hey, I, would lower, I would lower the vents in the gable by about 13 and a half inches <laughs> <laughs> that's it 
Yeah, they're too high to the peak. Yeah. So are they reshingling that face or what's there now? Uh, so presently there now is... Uh, are they doing scalloped? Is that right? That's not... No, so it's, 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 a, it's a certain heat shake or, or a... Uh, right. Well, it's Royal... I believe the manufacturer is Royal Crest, but it's a shake or a mm -hmm. shingle, but it's a perfection shingle. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know what? It kind of looks like it's a different material, but I don't think it is. I think it's a little Dutch lap siding, I believe, that he did. And what's in the elevation yeah. you showed us? Yeah, so it's the Dutch lap we're going to keep here, and this is the perfection uh, vinyl yeah. shake. On That's the what's there right now. Okay. That's correct. So he's just adding the vent. Okay. On both uh, elevations. No, he's, he, he's no, going no. from the... Doing that? Yeah. He's changing so it. This is going to get changed. So the, the gable, all the gable ends are going to get changed to, sh to uh, shingle. Got it. Right. And, you know, these are all going to, the, the pediments above the windows are all going to be added. And uh, I believe larger corner boards. Larger trim, right? Yeah, than what he has, yeah. What, is the trim still going to be white? That's all going to be white? It's all going to be white. Okay. All right. and, so, and he's going to do the base, too. And he's going to do the stone base at the front. Oh, yeah, that would look great. At the front. Okay. Yeah, I believe originally we had it on the Dorchester side as well. Okay. I, I don't have any more questions, guys. Do you? No. No, I'm good. So we're going to do the public hearing. Stand by, Dave. Okay. Um, I make a motion to open the public hearing application 1844, 51 Joyce Road. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think there is a lag. That's what it is. There is. Yeah. I, I noticed it when we were doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Um, yeah. So what do you got there, Rob? Um, is there anyone that wishes to offer comment on this application? Just raise your hand. I am not seeing any hands raised, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. They had their chance. So can we give I, it. Can we give it two or three more minutes? <laughs> 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 no. So then no. I make okay. a motion to close the public hearing on this application, 1844, 51 Joyce. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any more comments? When, so they're going to... No, so just gonna, build, build what's on the drawing. Yeah, build what's <laughs> on the drawing this time. We don't want to see you again. Yeah. You, you yeah, weren't and, the original. And what's, <laughs> and what's been approved um, by yeah. the, the zoning board. Yeah, well, he has no control over yeah. what gets built, yeah. but I think... Yeah, I'm just the architect. Great. It's great that <laughs> yeah. he came, it's great yeah. that he came forward. It's a little bit of prompting though. So I make a motion to approve application one eight four four fifty one Joyce. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Gentlemen, thank you. Have a good evening. <laughs> yep. Good evening. Next application is sixty five Maple, application two zero zero four. Yeah, and that's uh, John Yanisito, who should appear in a minute. Tell us where to go. I just mute and stop video. Here it comes. Hey, John. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Still awake? It's really uh, yellow. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. What it is. <clears throat> it's going to be what it is. Yeah. I'm yeah. tonight. And, and it's yellow face. Must <laughs> <laughs> be all that wine yeah. I've been drinking and watching you guys. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the honesty. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Share screen, right? All right. All right, so I got the share screen. This one here. All right. Yeah, thanks. Okay, are we all ready? I don't yes. see any. You've been waiting. All right. I don't see anybody on my screen except for my drawings. That's fine. That's the right? setting That's, that you yeah. you do. So we all have our set differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you guys can see everything. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So you see your screen. Yep. Okay. Great. So good evening. Uh, my name is John Yanestito. I'm an architect, and I'm representing Golden Fields Estate this evening. The owners of the property. Uh, we are proposing the construction of a new single-family residence at the vacant lot located at 65 Maple Street. So here is the, uh, the existing lot with the proposed uh, residence. Um, 
So at the front of the residence, we have the driveway located at the left side, which is the lowest portion, the lowest part of the site. Uh, and along the right side of the driveway, there will be a retaining wall with steps leading up to a covered front porch. Uh, and then at the rear of the property, we are proposing a small patio on grade. Um, so I'll show you the site section and uh, street elevation. So this is the, the site section and street elevation showing the existing and proposed conditions. Uh, the site and the street slope down from right to left. And there's about an eight foot drop on the site from, from right to left. Um, these are the two existing residents on the left and the right and, uh, and the proposed residents uh, uh, on the vacant lot at 65 Maple Street. Um, so here are the exterior elevations. Uh, so at the front, we have the, the driveway and garage located at the lowest portion of the lot. And then there'll, there'll be a retaining wall along the right side of the driveway and, and then steps up to the front covered front porch. Uh, on the right side, um, the property slopes towards the back of the house uh, to the um, patio on grade, which is here on the rear. And then it slopes back down to the left side and then uh, back down to the, uh, uh, to the front where the driveway is. So the, the lot basically is sloping from left to right and from front to back, uh, actually from back to front. Uh, making this this left corner of the house the lowest portion um, on the property. Uh, so here's a rendering of the uh, of the house uh, showing the exterior materials. Uh, the wall surfaces will be a hardy plank siding uh, in a gray finish, a slate gray finish. Uh, also have a brick veneer along the base of the garage, the retaining walls, and the uh, the covered porch. Um, the uh, roof structures, uh, the main roof will be asphalt shingle and a charcoal finish, and the roof over the, um, the porch will be a standing seam metal roof and a black finish. The windows will be vinyl clad in a white finish. The trim boards will be AZEC in a white finish. The columns will be AZEC in a white finish. Uh, the railings will be composite in a white finish. Uh, the gutters and leaders will be aluminum in a white finish. And then the front door and the overhead door uh, will be fiberglass and a white finish. Uh, this application was presented to the Architectural Review Board on March 5th, uh, and it was approved with the recommendations to add and enhance the architectural features on the front facade. Um, so some of the changes that were made, uh, we extended the eave at the gable end here and added a metal roof along the front gable. Uh, we added a crown molding uh, on this window here above the garage door. We changed the, um, um, the overhead door from a standard door to a barn style door with, with glazing. Um, and then we changed the, uh, we increased the widths of the, all the corner boards uh, to six inches. Uh, the, the architecture review board also had some recommendations to add some windows here at the front porch and, and the extra window at the top here. We did take a look at that and um, uh, we didn't add it because it wasn't feasible with the stair right behind this wall. And I'll show you that. Um, so here's the uh, front elevation. Let's see, I'm looking at that. The front elevation showing the profile of the existing, uh, the, the proposed stair behind this wall. And then with a minimal 18-inch uh, clearance from the landing and the steps, this small square here is the uh, allowable window size for, for that area. Um, so we thought it was really um, not feasible having just a small window in this area, uh, especially from an interior point of view, having uh, multiple windows at the upper part and a small window over the stair, and then another window um, here on the side of the stair. So we felt that it would be better to just leave it the way it is. On uh, so we 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 incorporated most of the comments that the building that, that the architecture review board wanted. Uh, just didn't do these these uh, windows uh, at the porch and above the porch. Um, next thing is a landscape plan. Um, here's the landscape plan that was prepared by Stephen Lopez, the uh, landscape architect. Um, on the plantings, we are proposing new plantings along the left side of the property. Uh, on the right side, there is some heavy planting um, 
on the existing adjacent property, and we are adding a few trees uh, along that property line. We are proposing low plantings uh, in front of the, the covered porch and along the retaining wall. Uh, and then we're also proposing a couple of trees at the front of the property in the rear. Uh, the Architecture Review Board had a couple of comments on the tree locations. Um, they, they wanted these two trees in the, in the back here pulled away from the house a little further, so he did that. And uh, these two trees uh, previously were located in the right of way, so we pushed them back onto the, uh, beyond the property line. Um, here is um, the storm management uh, plan, uh, which was um, prepared by Hudson Engineering. Um, all the dry wells will be located uh, uh, in the driveway um, at the lowest part of the site uh, to capture all the runoff from the, the uh, new impervious surfaces. Um, this drawing was submitted to the town's uh, consulting engineer and um, we are in the process of addressing a few minor comments from, from uh, Joe Trumelli's office. Um, and I think that's basically it. I do have some samples of the uh, materials if you'd like to see them. I mean, this, this is the hardy plank siding, uh, the roof shingles, which would be a charcoal black. The, the is that gray? Yeah, that one, that, that picture was gray, but further into the catalog here, somewhere there's a black, charcoal black. Wait for it. Uh, there it is, charcoal black, um, ultra dimensional uh, right. asphalt shingle. The metal roof will be in a coal black, uh, AZEC trim, aluminum gutters. I also had a brick here somewhere. This is the, uh, the composite railing. I guess it would be this one here. Ah, here it is. Composite railing there, and I think there might be a better picture of it somewhere here. Yeah, there it is, composite railing. Uh, and then the entry doors, Therma True, uh, fiberglass and a white finish. And then the overhead doors will be a, uh, a carriage house door from Overhead Door Company. Um, I did have a brick, but I can't find the brick for some reason. Let's see, where's the brick? Oh, here it is. There's the uh, sample of the whitewash brick. And that's basically it. Uh, you didn't show us your rendering. I, I didn't? I no. don't remember saying it. Yeah. Come on, that's what we're waiting for. <laughs> I, 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 put, I put this up when I was explaining all the uh, all the uh, trim, and then and then showed the uh, changes we made. We added this uh, this eave detail with uh, with the metal roof. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. <Phil-Paul. laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you have it there, John? You guys see it? Uh, no, it hasn't come. Oh, up hold it on. No, we don't see it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. You don't see the rendering. Not yet. Yeah, this is yeah, the one that Phil put up. Yeah. Stop screen yeah, sharing. Yeah, screen you stop screen sharing. sharing? Hold yeah, on. yeah, we see you. Right. He does the last house he had approved. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> All right, you guys didn't see this one before? No. There we go. There you go. <laughs> As I was talking about the materials, you didn't see this one? No. No, we no. saw okay. the cut sheet. No, you you show, walked us through the cut sheet. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. so here, here's, um, so yeah. this is the rendering. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the changes that were made from the architectural review board were we extended the eave across the gable here and added a metal roof here. We added a crown molding over this window. We changed the, the um, overhead door from a traditional door to a barn style door. Uh, and then the two things we didn't do, we didn't add the windows, the windows um, right. in the porch because it didn't work with the staircase there. It looks nice. Yeah, yeah. it does look nice. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, if there is uh, some concern about the brick wall under the front porch there, you could simply um, add a, a light fixture to that just to, just to, I guess, enhance the space a little bit. That's, you know. You mean, um, here? Oh, you mean here? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, I think I, I, I don't think I have any. Yeah, I mean, we could we could put a sconce. Yeah, I think I have some overhead lights. You have overhead lights, yeah. In the porch. 
Um, I think I, I think it's it. fine though. It's yeah. Back to the elevations. Yeah, I think we we didn't have any lights here. We had a couple lights at this sliding door here, and a light fixture at this uh, basement entrance. Right. Uh, and then we were just going to have some overhead lights on the porch. But yeah, we could definitely add some sconces on either side of the door. If, um, That'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be fine. nice enhancement. Yeah, this room. John, we, we think it's good. Yep. Yeah, you could stand down. So, uh, so what are we doing here? Public hearing. So, make a motion to open the public hearing on application <clears throat> 200465 Maple. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Okay. Um, is there anyone here that uh, wants to raise their hand to offer a comment to the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, it does not appear that there's anyone that wants to offer a comment to the board. Thank you. So, any more comments from the board? Oh, no, hold on. I got to close the public hearing. So, I make a motion to close the public hearing on this application 2004 65 Maple. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any more comments? You want to just go for the approval? And then in this case, you'll have the two standard um, conditions about the landscape plan and the stormwater management plan. Exactly. Thank you, Mark. Thank yep. you, Mark. Uh, that's it. So I make a motion to approve this application, 65 Maple 2004. Subject to Take, those two. Yeah. Subject, subject to the conditions, right? Subject to those two conditions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Thanks, hey, thank you guys. Yeah, sorry, thank you, so John. Cool. Okay, good John. morning. I won't even say good morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost. Right. We're going to be done by morning. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> almost. <laughs> so, right, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Right, Stay safe. Take care. All right. Next application is 81 Clarence Road, application 19 33. Are there still people in the audience, Mr. Yep. Uh, I, I believe have there are applicants that are waiting to come in. That's just applicants. Okay. So I'm certain I'm there's I'm a guessing. large, yeah, yeah, large viewing not. audience at home. Well, I just certain. we just have a new panelist, so he's coming up. Uh, John Scavelli. Okay. We oh, we just don't have uh, a video. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> okay. There you go. Uh, hi guys. Hey, what's happening? Hey. How good are evening. you? We're doing well. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys are, are ready to start? Yes, it's all yours. Yes. All right. Well, good evening, all. My name is John Scavelli. Uh, I am the engineer uh, representing the Traviglinos uh, for the proposed application at 81 Clarence Road. Uh, the proposed application is for an addition and alteration to an existing single family dwelling. So the current dwelling consists of th three bedrooms and one bathroom, and the proposed work would be for a three bedroom, uh, two bathroom uh, layout in the home. Um, as part of the application, uh, at the first floor level, there's a proposed portico uh, to the front entry of the home. Um, a proposed side mudroom expansion towards the right side of the home. And then also, also a new second story addition. How's it going? Um, oops. That? A proposed second story addition um, at the top uh, left-hand side of the home. So as, as part of the application, uh, there was an area of variance that was granted back on November 12th, 2019. Uh, the variance was for a front yard setback deficiency. The, the home has an existing legal non-conforming front yard setback of 17.13 feet, whereas 30 feet is required. Uh, the proposed addition is to match the current footprint of the home. So there was a variance that was needed for the, the existing 17 foot um, front yard setback. So just to kind of walk through uh, the site plan, um, so just taking a look at the aerial, aerial view, um, but the, the work involved is basically a second story addition um, over this existing flat roof area of the home, a new front portico uh, to the front entry door at the front side of the home, and a new mud room bump out on the right side of the home with a covered roof structure over this existing patio. I'm just looking at the, the formal site plan. So this is where the proposed second story uh, addition is over the, the current footprint of the home. The proposed uh, portico at the front entry. 
and the proposed new mudroom off to the side with a proposed roof structure uh, over this existing patio. Uh, so just moving on uh, to, to the floor plans, just as I mentioned for the first floor plan, this was the portico, the side mudroom, and then the, the covered uh, roof structure over the existing patio. And then at the second, uh, second floor, uh, this hatched area is the proposed addition, which would be a, a master bedroom. And then there's some proposed alterations uh, to the existing layout uh, for a three bedroom, uh, two bathroom layout at the second floor. And just moving uh, to the elevations. So this is uh, an existing picture of, of the home as, as it currently exists. And basically the phase one of, of the owner's renovation um, took place last spring where it was basically a new siding um, to, and, and also this new bay window at, at the front side of the home. And now this is the, the next phase of, of the renovation and, and addition that, that the owners are looking to, to do to the home, which would involve this new addition, which essentially is gonna match the, the existing roof line all the existing materials, but it's gonna fill in this void at this top left-hand side. And then at the front entry uh, would be that, that new portico structure to give a little more depth to, to that, that front facade. And then, then off to the back, you know, this elevation is a little deceptive because this, this, this door is actually further in the background. There's actually a covered roof structure. And then this is a side mudroom off to the, uh, the side of the house. So if we look at the, the right elevation, there's gonna be a proposed uh, mudroom off to the side with a covered uh, roof structure over this existing uh, patio structure. Now in regards to uh, the materials, um, you know, currently there is a, a hardy plank uh, smoothboard siding. Uh, the color is a, a Booth Bay blue uh, with an AZAC white trim. Um, throughout the home. And the proposed addition is to match exactly the, the same siding, the same trim, um, the same windows, which are an Anderson 400 series. Um, and also as part of this application, which was also a recommendation uh, by the Architecture Review Board, is this center window is proposed actually to, to be moved over, to be in line with this bay window. So if we just move back out to to the front elevation. So there was a few recommendations from the Architecture Review Board, which were all um, you know, accepted and, and implemented into the, uh, the design, one being um, relocating that existing front window to just center it on that, that front elevation. And then also the incorporation of, of shutters uh, to add some detail to, to the windows at, at the front elevation. Um, these are just some additional pictures we can kind of just walk through. So this is the side elevation where there's an existing uh, entry door into the, the kitchen area where, where that proposed uh, mudroom um, and roof structure is to be um, over this existing uh, patio structure. And these are just some of the uh, existing uh, neighboring houses. So with that being said, are, are there any, any questions I could answer for you guys? Uh, that was pretty straightforward. Yeah. Are, is there any change in the impervious surface at all? So the, the, there is a change of the, the front stairs as mm -hmm. part of the, the, the portico. Um, Comes out a little more. Huh? It, yes. Yeah, so, yep. yep. And it's really just to basically have a, you know, a bit of a larger, um, yeah you know, roof structure, give a little definition so that the stairs that are there existing actually had to get a little, little deeper. But other than that, all the impervious um, surfaces for the patio is an existing um, surface where the roof is going. And then also the second story of this year is over an existing footprint. Okay. Great. I don't have any comments. Thank you for the presentation yeah. right, uh, for you. keeping it short and sweet. Um, let's just do the public hearing quickly. So I make a motion to open the public hearing on application 1933-81 Clarence. 
Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anyone from the public that wants to offer a comment? Raise your hand on the side, please. Mr. Chairman, it does not appear that there is anyone who wishes to address the board. Okay, thank you. So I make a motion to close the public hearing on this application. 1933, anyone clearance? All in favor? Second, aye. 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 <laughs> All right. Okay, we're almost there. You, Lewis, you're still you can able to do this? Okay, so... Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay awake. <laughs> did we, right, so we're done with that one, right? Yes. Uh, no, we, well, did we, we approve it? Yeah, we haven't... We, uh, All right, Lewis. No, we, we closed the public hearing, hour. right? Oh, we closed, we, did we approve we it? We closed Robert, it. Okay, no, we just closed yeah. it, we didn't approve it. Okay, so I make Correct. a to <laughs> approve application 19338081 Clarence Road. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Very nice. Was very nice. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Yep. yep. You too. Thank you. Last application is 2008-291 Main Street. Um, I'd like to point out for the record that uh, the uh, new board member, Louis Campagna, is representing this applicant. Um, and that this the application that we're about to see was in progress before Louis was asked to join the board. And he advised uh, the plant, Margaret, and the town supervisor of, this, of the situation they were in. And um, board members, that's the rest, will be impartial and um, uh, be impartial to this. And Lewis will not be voting on this. He'll be recusing himself. Yes. So that being said. Yeah. Lewis, if anything, he faces an increasingly nasty board at 1153 <laughs> yes. at night. I, so, I wouldn't envy him. Yes, we will. That's right. So, um, so good evening, chair, members of the board. I'm Lewis Campana. Uh, the architect for the mixed use development of, uh, at 291 uh, Main Street uh, for the owner BKB uh, East Chester LLC. Um, the proposed development uh, is a permitted use in the RV zone and there will be a number of variances required uh, and I'll discuss those uh, a bit later on. Uh, this is in fact a, a preliminary review. Just want to point out we have uh, contracted with uh, Hudson Engineers for uh, stormwater and, uh, and also uh, Mark Benedict for landscape design. Um, and those will be presented to you at a subsequent uh, meeting. Let me share the So uh, this, the site uh, is also known as Section 67, Block 2, Lot 13, uh, is located within the RB zone on the western side of Main Street. Uh, and, and it's uh, situated on the corner of Main Street and Hall Avenue. Uh, as you can see, the site also uh, is directly adjacent to the Residential 3 zone. Uh, and as a result, uh, there are special dimensional requirements that apply to this uh, development. Just want to jump over to the survey. Uh, currently uh, existing on site, here's the survey. survey. You guys see the survey? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gone now. Now I don't. Now I don't. Yeah. No, not. I'm not looking at. I'm not trying to look at this survey here. We see you in no. a survey. Oh, it's behind my other screen. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, currently existing on site uh, is uh, is a, a legal dimensionally non-conforming one-story brick building, uh, which was built in 1984, as a uh, as part of its approval, they were granted a few area variances. And the first is a, a zero front uh, setback and a zero uh, street side setback, a five foot uh, side yard setback. And also uh, this says 12 parking spaces, but they were approved for 10 parking spaces with a, a width of eight foot nine inches. Um, the, uh, there's a chain link fence here uh, and with, uh, with gate and then it continues and wraps around the entire property. 
um, there's an existing curb cut on Hall Avenue. Uh, and there are, it shows that there, there were planting buffers here, but there are no planting buffers besides an existing one along the rear of the property. Um, <clears throat> this is, let me zoom in here. This is the existing, uh, brick building. Okay, this is as viewed from Main Street. Uh, here is viewed from Hall Avenue uh, from the parking lot. Okay, uh, just take note that the accessible uh, handicapped parking space is located here currently. I'll touch upon that later. And this is the uh, picture from the north. Um, the adjacent properties, uh, one of which, as we all know, is the Waverly School. This uh, is situated directly behind uh, the, uh, 291 Main Street. Uh, here it is as it wraps around over to uh, Main Street. These two structures are to the north of 291, which is located here. Uh, this is an existing three-story multi... Uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, an existing three-story building with a zero setback. Uh, adjacent to that in the north, again, this is a, a mixed-use uh, property. Across the street to the north, we have the back and side of AVAC, a two-story building with dental offices. Directly across Main Street is uh, a white brick uh, Tudor building where Mavis is located. Diagonal across the street is the Sunoco Station. Another two-story mixed-use building. And across Hall Avenue is this two-story multifamily uh, building. And then again, going further south, a uh, single-family residence. And then we have a two-family residence just south of that. A church located to the uh, south, uh, southwest of 291. Uh, Main Street on Hall Avenue, and then single family residence, and another one just uh, to the west of, uh, of the church. Um, just want to go to the quickly to the aerial view here. Um. So, um, what's significant about some of the properties uh, that surround 291 Main Street? Uh, we have uh, um, the Waverly School here. We have the church property and then that two-story brick multi-family uh, building. Uh, they act as significant buffers between 291 and the residential properties um, around the area within the 200-foot um, purview line. Uh, but after reviewing the, the photos of the existing adjacent buildings, the existing building, um, and if you've ever driven down this section of Main Street, uh, you'd be confronted with, with the fact that there's certainly a lack of identity in the area. Um, and we made it a, a point or a, a top priority to um, design an addition to this building uh, that would provide that identity to the section of roadway. Um, and in doing so, we would hope to increase the character of the neighborhood and in turn, uh, protect and preserve the property values of the neighbors. So with that, I'd like to uh, run through the proposed uh, alterations and improvements. This is the, uh, the uh, architectural site plan. And here we have the, uh, the footprint of the existing building, okay? What we're doing is <clears throat> converting the first floor into an office space for the owner um, and it'll be occupied uh, by his insurance and accounting firm. Um, so it'll be a business use. And then we're proposing to add two stories to, uh, to this existing building. Uh, the two stories will consist of five uh, residential units or rental units. Um, there would be three units on the second floor and uh, two units on the, uh, on the third floor. Uh, we were sensitive about the zero 
uh, setback along the two frontages here. So what we chose to do was set back the second and third floor. Uh, and what that allowed us to do, or what that provided uh, was a space to create terraces for the residents on the second floor, but also give the intersection uh, a bit of relief. So uh, basically for lack of better terms, if we were to build on top of the existing um, perimeter of the building, it would be a bit imposing. So we wanted to soften that a little bit by setting that back. Um, now, the, the, there are a number of variances that we need here um, in plan. The, the current zoning ordinance uh, prescribes a 10-foot front yard setback. Um, the existing building is zero, but we're stepping back, so we're seeking a, a six-foot, four-and-a-half-inch variance. The same thing goes here. Um, however, in this corner, we are coming back out to the, uh, the footprint of the house, uh, of, the, uh, of the existing building. This dashed line indicates that second, that second and third floor. The third floor, uh, there's a terrace, a communal terrace on the northern side here. Um, okay. we, uh, th there's a side yard setback, uh, a 10 foot setback uh, requirement here. And again, we're building on top of the existing footprint. Um, and a five foot setback here. Uh, and we're going back to zero in this corner. In terms of the parking, um, we are proposing to repave uh, the parking area and also make some improvements. Um, the, the existing building has uh, 10 spots, inclusive of one handicap spot. Um, we have proposed 11, but there is something that I wanna to touch upon about that 11, but uh, I'll do that in a few. Uh, the existing handicap space is located here uh, in, that, in that photo that you saw previously. I thought it'd be responsible to relocate that to um, a safer location uh, here, uh, more towards uh, the southern side of, of the parking area with an accessible aisle, and then a path that will take you around to this ramp, which will take you into the building. Um, now, because we're within 150 feet and adjacent to residential zone, uh, here being Waverly School, there, there's a requirement that you need a 20 foot setback to pave the area, the parking area. Uh, we are proposing to preserve that existing uh, legal non-conforming condition. Uh, we're also proposing to remove the chain link fence around the perimeter of the property. Uh, and uh, install a new white vinyl fence, uh, paneled and V-groove uh, vinyl fence along the, uh, the western and northern side, which will terminate back into the building here with the gate. Uh, we are adding three foot buffers here and, and here. Okay, we're proposing to um, maintain that existing curb cut and driveway net. Uh, we are adding stop sign and signage uh, for the handicapped parking and also a stop sign here for exiting the, the property. Um, and on the northern side, we are adding a buffer, but we are required uh, to get a variance because the buffer instead of three feet would be two foot seven inches. And that would just be uh, the reason why is to maintain that eight foot nine width on the existing parking spots that were previously approved. Now, um, there are 29 spots that are required for this building because we have the business use down low and the residential on the upper two floors. Uh, and we are seeking a variance to have 11. I did. Uh, some uh, analysis regarding uh, off-site or on-street parking. Uh, there are a, there are a number of parking spots across the street uh, on the eastern side of Main Street, which is located here. Uh, there are a total of 21 two-hour spots, and then on the northern side of Hall Avenue on the side of Mavis, there are an additional four. Um, so this would be. Uh, if, if there was overflow during the day uh, for the business, I think these spots here uh, would, would suffice. 
Now, one thing to take into consideration regarding the parking is that the building will be, will be occupied by two separate, uh, two different uh, uses. Uh, uses of which will be occupying the building at staggering times. The first floor will be used during working hours and then the two floors above that um, for the majority of the time would be occupied after working hours and uh, after and before working hours. Um, the, so I go to the plan here. Um, just very quickly, uh, the office will be uh, accessible from the corner of, of the intersection uh, as it is existing. And also from the parking lot via the stair here and the ramp to the back door. Uh, the residences would, would come in through this area closest to the parking, uh, parking lot into the lobby where uh, you can access the second and third floor by stair or elevator. Uh, there will also be mail here. Um, and uh, again, like I said previously, uh, one bedroom unit here and two two bedrooms uh, on the side. Third floor, two, two bedrooms with a communal uh, roof terrace here. Uh, now, um, before I get into the materials, because again, we're within 150 feet of that residential zone, uh, there's a height uh, requirement, 30 foot maximum building height and two and a half story. Uh, we're proposing a three story, so the ask is a half. Uh, and the tallest parapet um, is uh, 10 feet taller than uh, the maximum allowable. Uh, the elevator has a minimal bulkhead, which will be a minimal, sorry, bulkhead, which will be concealed by the parapet there would also be mechanical equipment and exhaust vents on, on the roof as well. Uh, so in terms of, of the materials and architectural features, uh, the, the cornice here is a simple federal style cornice, which would be painted in the Faro and Ball off black. Um, the brick veneer uh, would be uh, white, uh, lime washed or whitewashed. Um, I did incorporate, I'll show you an example of this, but this is, uh, let me zoom in here. This is a corbelled, um, a corbelled brick surround, which goes from the second floor above the windows on a third and back down. And I did that to uh, visually enhance uh, the verticality of, of these uh, sections here and these bays, I like to call them. Uh, although they're not bays, they're, they're flat. Uh, the, the windows and patio doors uh, would be a uh, aluminum clad, uh, black. Uh, these panels here uh, connecting the doors from the second floor to the third floor would also be painted in that Farrell and Ball black. And then simple uh, iron railing. And those iron railings would also be here in between these, uh, these pilasters. Um, the, uh, we, we also, oh, I'm sorry, these, uh, these awnings would be that same, that same black color as well. Um, we have a coping on top of, uh, the first floor, uh, parapet and that coping would, uh, be a, a precast, uh, concrete with, with a tan, uh, color. We also, I don't know why it keeps on doing that, but um, we also want to incorporate some of the existing detailing from the, uh, from the old building into the new. And you can see where we have this uh, double soldier course band here. Uh, we wanted to repeat that on some of the openings that you, you see on the exterior as well. Um, I've also incorporated copper uh, scuppers and, and leaders, which I think are also uh, a nice architectural feature um, and detail. And then the light fixtures, uh, which are shown throughout that, uh, will just create a nice glow during, uh, during the evening. Um, the, uh, the storefront windows, uh, used to be up high. And what we're proposing to do is bring them back down to, uh, to the floor elevation, uh, just to enhance the verticality and transparency of that level.
so this was the view from Main Street. This is the elevation on uh, Hall Avenue. This is the, the rear of the building uh, with the garages. This is the garbage enclosure. And then this is the northern side, which abuts up to the, uh, which is adjacent to the neighboring three-story uh, mixed-use building. Um, these are just some examples of uh, what I was uh, referring to before. This is the garbage enclosure, white vinyl fence, recessed flat V-group panels. Same thing with uh, the perimeter fence. Um, this is an example of the whitewash brick. And surprisingly enough, I was able to find similar detail to what I wanted to incorporate around the windows on the elevation. So you can see the texture that the building has um, and also the shadow lines that this will create. This is an example of the light fixtures uh, that will be on the building. Um, it's a restoration hardware, uh, DeLorean box guns. And finally, uh, we have the 3D renderings and just sort of a before and as proposed to this obviously existing and proposed. Um, there are uh, existing planters that are in the town right of way uh, that wrap the building. I think it was sort of the only way that this could be landscaped, obviously with a zero, a zero setback. Um, and again, we, we will be having the landscape architect provide something to show what our intent is with this. This is just here just to show that the landscaping would certainly soften this building uh, on the corner. And then again, the stepping back of of that second and third floor, um, I think also uh, lends that, that intersection with a bit of relief. But you can see some of the, uh, the detailing here, the, the cornice, and copper gutters. Um, the, I, I also wanted to show you what this potentially could look like at dusk or during the night with the glow that these fixtures sort of give the building um, and with uh, that being said, if you have uh, any questions. Uh, yeah, uh, Lewis, um, what, what is the, the existing number of parking spaces right now? The existing number of parking spaces is uh, currently 10. 10. So, and yeah. to um, pardon my reference to Nigel from Spinal Tap, um, now you're going to 11? <laughs> uh, well, yes. So we were, <laughs> we, we were uh, proposing 11. However, um, I did receive some comments from, uh, from um, Westchester County. And they were asking to provide, potentially provide bike racks. So... I, I think it would be advantageous to remove maybe one of the parking spots, number 11, mm -hmm. move the garbage along the planter here, and then a bike rack along the wall of the, wall of the building. I think that could, okay. that could potentially work. Okay, um, but then the, you're increasing your need for an even greater variance. Uh, and, and it looks to me that like the parking is maybe your biggest issue here, the, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the parking may be mm -hmm. the, the biggest issue. Yeah, because you have a three-story building right next to it as well. I, I don't think it's out of place the, in, in terms right. of massing. And, it, it, you know, I do like the, the setback on the second and third floors. It really makes a big difference in, in your, um, mm -hmm. your illustration. And, and it's, it's, it's obviously a, a very well-conceived, well-rendered um, uh, building and, and, and certainly a, a vast improvement, I would think. Um, but the, the, the fact that you're, you would be, be now having uh, three stories, ad admittedly one, one being a business uh, and the other two being residential, um, with the, roughly the same number of spaces that I, I, was, the, was the 10, or, or I think it, you showed us the original um, survey had, had 12 on it, um, or it's, at least it stated it was 12, even if it was 10. Was that conforming or that was, that was already uh, something that required a variance? 
it was something that requ uh, required a variance. I believe in the package, yeah, the package that I gave you, there was a uh, sort of a resolution um, back in 84. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but Lewis, I don't think you got a, I don't yeah. think you got a variance for the number of parking spaces. It, it was the width. For the width of the parking space. Mm -hmm. The width, yeah. yes. So the, the number complied at that time. So the, right. the variance related to the parking was with regard to the width of the parking spaces. Correct, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Okay. So this is this is going to be a decent size ask from the uh, uh, from the zoning board um, to, to because this is this is not even close to uh, conforming and it's, it's, it's but but uh, I, I don't know that there you know I, as, as you pointed out there's a lot um, that was not conforming about this building in the first instance um, I, I I do agree with you that the the fact that it's now would be mixed use does work in your favor. Um, but, um, you know, uh, the, 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 as far as I'm concerned, this is, a, this is an issue for the zoning board, not for our board. Well, right. also, I did mention to Lewis and I spoke to Jim about the fact that um, we, we probably will get Phil Greeley to look at this to an extent. And mm -hmm. Phil recommended that Lewis get a traffic engineer to do a, um, you know, more of a, a light traffic analysis because it's probably not going to generate a lot of traffic, but his traffic engineer would coordinate with Phil Greeley to see what traffic issues needed to be looked at. And I think he should look at parking issues as well. Yeah. Um, and then we had also talked about, even though our zoning law says um, you only have to provide stormwater management facilities if there's no net, if there is a net increase in runoff, but lately the board has been requiring some kind of stormwater, either something that deals with quality or quantity of stormwater on the site. So um, I did ask Lewis to have his engineer speak with uh, Joe Tremelli about ways that even though technically they're not required to provide full, unless you were, were you proposing that, Lewis? <laughs> um, well, so so the existing, uh, the existing grades here, um, uh -huh. they're higher back here than they are here. And the 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 I guess the previous building owner was experiencing some water issues, uh, you know, sheet flowing off of this into the into the um, the ramp area and actually into the building. So there are there are drainage issues that we need to um, address under any circumstances. Address yeah. exactly, and and I met with Mike uh, Mike Hines. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike Stein, and yeah. uh, <laughs> we he was. Uh, He's going to do some uh, test holes in the park. Okay, good. So, so you you'll deal with some stormwater yeah. management um, under exactly. any circumstances. That's that's correct. Yes. Okay. All right. That's that's all I have. So. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Let's see, Tough Jim is I was new. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm like, why yeah. isn't he here, mate? Right. So, <laughs> Lewis, what's the uh, what's the conforming number of spaces? The conforming number of spaces is 29. Got it. Yeah. Um, but and and Margaret, I wanted to um, to get your thought on this. Maybe we have a discussion. Um, but I, I was researching the zoning uh, the zoning regs and. Section 13, subsection C12, um, I believe uh, the way it, it's written gives the planning board the ability to reduce the amount of spots given that it's a mixed use building and the uh, occupancies will be occupying the building at alternating times. Okay, well, we'll look at that. I'll look yeah. At that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I would think even if that were the it's, case, that we, we wouldn't be big, able to get yeah. it anywhere near where it no, needs to I, be for I, you. <laughs> I, no, I completely agree with you, yes. Mm -hmm. So of the 29, how many are office and how many are, are residential? So residential, uh, 10 are required. 10. And um, the office, obviously 19. So the owner, um, the BKB, uh, his his business he he has currently eight uh, employees uh, actually inclusive of himself so that's 
who will be occupying. But I know that's just now. Who knows what's going to happen down the line in the future? Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's the seems to be the hurdle. Parking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's it, what do they use for parking across the street? They have street parking or they have parking on site over there? Uh, there? Meaning? Isn't there another uh, two-story residential building nearby that you told us about? So the two-story residential building, um, let me zoom in here. Yeah. I believe they have, I believe there's parking uh, back here and along the side. Oh. Um, the, the church lot has, you know, the parking on the church, you know, property here. Sure. And that's. Okay. Yeah. Are, uh, Lewis, are there restrictions on the parking uh, going uh, west on Hall uh, during the school day? Uh, because I know the school is right there and uh, I'm, I'm guessing there might be some restrictions on parking. Uh, maybe an hourly. Uh, I, I don't know that it's metered parking, uh, but but are there are there any restrictions? Is that a place that people can park? So there is no parking allowed here. Okay, that's what yeah. I figured. Yeah, if you yeah. drive yeah. by in the morning, eight thirty, mm -hmm. there's typically yeah. a line of cars dropping kids off. Yes, that's what I figured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so I have to see if open the public hearing. So let me just do that, mm -hmm. and then we'll come back. So I make a motion to open the public hearing on this application to 008291 Main Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd be really surprised if there's anyone here, Robert. <laughs> These are the diehards, or, or maybe somebody who really can't stand Lewis has been waiting, <laughs> waiting to, exactly. to the wee hours to, to exact his or her revenge. Exactly. Are there any members of the public uh, that wish to raise their hand to address the board? Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, there's no one that uh, appears to be interested in addressing the board on this application. What a surprise. <laughs> They'll have another opportunity um, next month. So we'll leave the public hearing open. And then um, do we have any more questions from Mr. Campana? I don't. We'll have an opportunity to ask more in the future. You already said, and it's on the the notes that Margaret gave out gave out as to um, who you consultants you're going to be hiring to continue right. with you. So mm -hmm. don't need to talk about that. And then I guess the only other thing to wrap up is I'm going to make a motion. This is for lead agency, so I'm going to make a motion for the planning board to declare its intent to be lead agency for the secret review of application two zero zero eight two nine one Main Street. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So that being said, I think we're done, right? So okay. we're looking forward to this move forward. So um, what's the next step for this application? He comes back and then we continue review. He's looking to get to the zoning board, correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And just a reminder um, to, to the other three members of the board who are not named Louis Campana, that any any that that any time we are that that this application is on our agenda, uh, we have to make it a point to uh, uh, provide advance notice that we are going to be there, or else. Because uh, we all have to be there. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I have to adjourn. Yes. Or, or, or or we find a, a, during the COVID times uh, a fifth person. Find a fifth member. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any suggestions? Let me know. <clears throat> We'll find someone soon, right? All right. Well, that said, it's been a little fun. Twelve thirty. All right. So I'm the name. Going to close this. All right. Thanks, Only guys. Twelve twenty-five. The... Come on. <laughs> yeah, we did a lot. We yeah. got yeah, we some did. of the big applications. It's late, but we got yeah. a lot done. So thank yeah. you, everyone. Well, we had a backlog. All right. We're good. Yes. So and Margaret, I... one last thing. I, I my my copy of I I didn't finish reading it, but my copy of the minutes from the February meeting is two sided. Oh, mine, mine wasn't, and I checked it. Yeah, so, so it just, it, you know, we, we, we discovered it just depends on what printer we send them to. So. Okay. Well, mine is two-sided. I, I will, okay, I will try to look at it before the last time, before the next meeting, so maybe we can get that done. Okay. And I you. am not looking forward to reading the five and a half hour uh, oh, <laughs> minutes no. of this meeting. <laughs> I'll let you read it. 
and fill me on on the details. We were here, uh, right? So yeah. um, that being said, thanks everyone. Good night. Have a nice weekend. And I make a motion to close the planning board meeting of May twenty eighth, two thousand slash May twenty ninth. Right? Oh yes. Yeah, <laughs> All right. It's still the twenty eighth meeting. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good Aye. evening, everyone. Good, good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night.